Dan, we got one more to touch, and this is going back to the video game space and Red Dead Redemption. Uh, this is, I, I think, really kind of like the Chinese democracy of video games. It was this long-awaited, you know, a lot of hype yeah, built up it's around. A hit. <laughs> except it's a hit. That's that's true. Yeah, I think it is hard to argue that this is a wildly successful game uh, for the unfamiliar. Red Dead is from uh, video game company Take Two uh, in collaboration with Rockstar, one of their subsidiaries. And this was released in late October, a little bit before the holiday season. But we got a glimpse of some of the success that it had already in some conference call conversations with management. And I'm just going to drop a couple quotes here. Uh, one of them from the most recent call The title has set numerous records, including achieving the biggest opening weekend in the history of entertainment with over 700 million in retail sell through during the first three days. Red Dead Redemption 2 sold more in units in its first eight days than the original blockbuster Red Dead Redemption sold in its first eight years. And just to kind of back that up a little bit more, as of today, the title has sold over 17 million units worldwide. This is a wildly successful game. I think, given the launch time, a lot of the people that are hardcore fans and really wanted it probably already have it. But I imagine that this is something that a lot of people are still asking for for the holidays. Just think about where that number would place it on movie releases. It would make it a top five film release this year, and it's going to well surpass that. Um, I think what's really interesting about Red Dead Redemption, and I will be honest, I am not capable of playing games like this. I have a 14-year-old, <laughs> and that's how I know these things. But we're starting to see this new genre of games where the game comes out, and then it continues to develop. What's been very interesting about the Red Dead sort of launch cycle is there's actually been some pushback from the hardcores on, on the gameplay, on the sort of money earning system in the game. And they've actually made some changes to, to so these games are kind of fluid now where they have a two or three year lifespan. We know there's paid downloadable content. You can buy deluxe editions where you, you get all of that for a year and things like that. But they're actually making some core changes to the gameplay based on some of the early feedback. Yeah, and more and more we are seeing the video game publishers focus on the microtransactions that can happen within games uh, and some of these add ons that happen in the online worlds for these games. I think Red Dead Redemption is a perfect example of that. And, and if you're a Take Two shareholder, you got to be thrilled because this was a release that was twice delayed and this was the next franchise. They really needed to build this up to make sure they could sustain success beyond the GTA franchise that they've had so much success with. And, and let me give Take Two a lot of credit. So one of the complaints about these microtransactions, and it was a huge complaint with another sort of stumbled big release uh, when EA put out Battlefront 2, the, uh, the Star Wars tie-in game, is hardcore players want to be rewarded for playing. So if you can pay extra money and get a funny hat that doesn't change the gameplay but maybe makes you cooler, Hardcore players are okay with that, but they don't want someone like me, who's not a hardcore player, to who has you know is adult and has maybe more money than they do, to be able to spend forty bucks and all of a sudden be have a character that's better than the one they've put ten thousand hours into. So as much as there have been complaints with the monetary system, they are keeping it in favor of people who put in the time, and that's kind of the core audience for Take Two and Red Dead Redemption. Yeah, and it's clear the reception has been so strong, and this is really the game that Take Two needed. You look at their financials. In fiscal 2018, the company did bookings of about two billion and revenue just over, uh, just under 1.8 billion, I should say. Uh, and they are guiding for fiscal 2019 bookings of 2.8 billion and revenue of 2.6 billion, uh, and that's a real welcome sign because this is a, it's a stock that's priced for growth. And after enduring a flat year, basically, uh, investors wanted to see something successful from this franchise. Uh, they've totally delivered, and you look at the guidance that they're providing, they're expecting some serious growth on the back of not only this franchise, but what they're doing with GTA and what they're also doing with their NBA 2K franchise as well. And what's become really exciting is, you know, we talked about the microtransactions. These games are money makers years into their life cycle. And sort of as that dies down, it becomes like a movie franchise. They can put out Red Dead Redemption 3 and sort of have this huge base to build off of that's ready for it. So 
it's much like we talk about IP intellectual property in the movie business. If you can put together four or five franchises and have sort of that rolling release cycle, you know, you'll have a very strong business and, you know, this coming out and sort of working, it's just a major pillar for this comfort for take two. Yeah. You mentioned Red Dead 3. I don't think we can seriously talk about that coming out for another five years based on the release <laughs> calendar so far, but I'm sure there are already people dreaming it up, Dan. Actually, to, to, to tie our conversation back, uh, the next step for Red Dead Redemption might be next Christmas, a Switch release. Oh, really? It was talked about in a, you, you sent me a sort of Q and A with uh, with uh, I want to say the president of Nintendo, and he didn't exactly confirm it, but he said when Red Dead Redemption Two was conceived, the Switch did not exist. So now that the game is out there, it's really a matter of porting it over and sort of figuring out how to I don't want to say Nintendoitize it, but obviously there's sort of different violent standards and there's kind of different rules for the Nintendo universe. Oh, got it. I was gonna say that I would like to see Red Dead Redemption 2 because it's a prequel to 1. I would like to see them release a remastered 1 tie that ties directly into Red Dead Redemption 2. The map's set up for it. It see, looks... I mean, I, I just beat it like yesterday. <laughs> 2 or 1? 2. So you're ready for more. I'm ready for more. Yeah. Well, and the we'll, online we'll beta see. just got updated, so... We'll see. It's a great game. We'll see it's what awesome. happens. I'm glad that out of the three of us, one of us plays the game. It gives us a little bit of credibility oh, here in the studio. The amount of detail <laughs> in the game is absurd. So your holiday wish is to have a game that's never going to happen. Yes. <laughs> Come to light. I'm glad we're setting our expectations pretty reasonably. Good news, Austin. When it comes out, I'm buying it for you. <laughs> Perfect. Dan, what's on your wish list? I see... I've been married for 18 years. We have a 14-year-old. Most of our effort goes into buying gifts for our child. So, usually I just tell my wife what I want. This year I just bought it for myself. So, as you know, I bought an Oculus Go headset, which has been a mild bit of fun. It uh, it's really cool virtual reality, but there's not much software for it. And I bought myself an espresso coffee maker. So, Nice. So the the house is full of gadgets, and the Nespresso makes a very strong cup of coffee, and uh, I like it a lot more than the Keurig, which we've talked about on on many an industry focus. So you'll be hap hopped up on caffeine and playing virtual reality video games during the holidays. Exactly. And all <laughs> the games are the same. It's like you you jump out a plane and con control your descent using your head. Like it's very much we're in the early stages of content. There is no Red Dead Redemption equivalent or something that you would go, oh wow, I really want to sit with this headset, but it is still sort of cool. Maybe we'll get there someday. Um, thanks for hopping on, Dan. Well, Dylan, what do you want? Oh, uh, oh thank you. Still time thank to you buy for you asking. I appreciate you asking. Um, I, uh, I've requested a bike rack, uh, something I can put on the back of my bike so I can get some uh, bags on the back and do some longer rides and kind of get out uh, into the city and have some fun. So that, that's really, I'm, I could try to keep it simple. I also just buy stuff for myself. So I, I, I make it kind of hard for people giving me gifts. But that, that is first and foremost on my list. Uh, you know, a lot, of, a lot of gear type stuff, that kind of thing.